Welcome to Arizona Midday. I'm your host, Janine Ford. So glad you're with us and happy Valentine's Day. Today we are tackling the topic of relationships and love with Counselor Jane Fendelman. Jane, welcome back. Thank you so much for having me. Good to see you. And uh, Jane's going to be answering your calls a little later in the show. And Jane, first of all, let, let me ask you a quick question. Um, uh, there's a lot of flowers, a lot of things floating around here yeah. at the station. What if you're disappointed with your Valentine's gift? Kick the bum to the curb. Yeah, okay. No, just kidding. Yeah. Get, you, get yourself exactly what you want. Get would you get you what you want. And there's a lot of things in life like that, isn't there? Exactly. Okay, we're going to be talking about it. And get ready to call in with your questions about love and relationships to Jane. All right, it's Valentine's Day. Hi, how you doing? Hi, honey. Valentine's Day. So in honor of that, we are talking about relationships and love relationships today with certified counselor Jane Fendelman. And if you have a question about your relationship, please call right now at 602-258-1212. 602-258-1212 and we will have some questions for Jane coming up in a couple of minutes but right now we're going to just start off with a couple of warm-up questions and first of all um, how is it best to deal um, with some of these relationships and maybe with somebody let's start off with somebody that doesn't like you what are some of the best things to remember with that you mean if you're dating somebody who doesn't like you? And, and, and yeah, if you're dating somebody that doesn't, doesn't <laughs> like you, break up with them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah exactly. Just break, that's a simple one. Just break right away out. Yeah, exactly. Well, so they don't, don't like you. Don't date anybody who doesn't like you. Exactly. And <laughs> <laughs> All right, you ask a stupid question and you get, no, I'm just kidding. Okay, how do you let go of old relationships, old baggage? Like, how do you That's a really good that? question. That's a great question. You have to, if somebody is still back there giggling, you have to really stop and think about why do I think that that was all I deserved? If you're hung up on an old relationship that is over because something didn't match, something didn't fit, somebody didn't like you, and you're having trouble moving on, say so fit, excuse me, you're going to have to think about why do I think that's all that I deserve? You have to really think about what do I deserve? And if you're having trouble with that, Think about if you had a little girl or a little boy, and would you want them hung up on somebody who doesn't really love them, really want to be with them, really want to work things out with them? And also, if we're hung up on something that didn't work, that really means that we have a fear of love, and you need to look at that. If you're hung up on somebody who won't make a commitment with you, who won't work out issues with you, who, who wants to fight or stomp out and slam the door, then you need to think about why am I afraid of love so much that I'm hooked on somebody who won't just really be with me and work things out with me? And being kind of that type of a syndrome. Okay, now let, let's, let me get that question again, the, the one I was going to think about. Um, how, how, we have a couple of questions. How do you deal with someone, they like you so much, but you're just not really that fond of them, and you're trying to get that to, how, how, how do you deal with that? You have to really be honest with them because... I think most people would want to be hurt with the truth and hurt with a lie. And so if you're being nice and say going out with them and saying I really love you like a friend, well that would be an honest thing to say, I love you like a friend. Say, say to that, say that to them, I love you like a friend. But then don't go making out with them just because you're feeling uh, yeah. lonely or something. Yeah, yeah. Frisky. Don't them, yeah. Frisky. frisky. Don't get with them because you're feeling frisky <laughs> because, uh, you know, you, you, you care about them and they're attractive. Just be friends with them and stop yeah. there. Don't yeah. be making out with people that you not, that there's commitment there. Somebody's headed for a broken heart. Yes, exactly. You see that in a lot of relationships. Okay, mm -hmm. now we are going to come back in just a minute and take your calls for Jane. Stay with us. And welcome back. I'm here with Counselor Jane Fendelman, who is giving us advice on Valentine's Day relationships today. And our first caller, we have Susie on the line from Phoenix. Susie, go ahead with your question. Hi, guys. Um, I just want to tell you that what a great show you have, and I'm glad you do something like this to help people out. Um, Thank you. I'll tell you, I've, I've been with my gentleman for 35 years this coming June, mm -hmm. and we've had a grand relationship in a wild and crazy way. We just paid off our little house of 30 years, and we got a lot of good things going for us. But what I don't understand is I think he's going through a male menopause deal, if that's possible, <laughs> uh, where he's not sure uh, he wants to be with me and he wants to us to work, his, work it out as a team. But it's like that uh, love portion of just newness is kind of worn off. And I've tried everything. I mean, I've, you name it, I've tried it, and I've 
open to suggestions on, on trying something new to the point of where I almost feel like I want to give up. But um, there's not anything that I haven't tried. You know, I, maybe that's it. I've had a couple girlfriends tell me I've been too open with him. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and... Susie? Yeah. I, I know exactly what you're talking about. I'm so glad that you brought this up. <clears throat> You've been together for a long time. Mm -hmm. And couples walk along in their relationship, and it can be very comfortable and very wonderful for very many years. And then for some unknown reason, one of the partners will drop a bomb in the relationship that sort of blows the relationship up. And now we've thrown a bunch of spaghetti up in the air, and we don't know where it's going to land. Mm -hmm. That's scary and uncomfortable, but the most wonderful thing about it is... Beloved relationship, whether we want it to or not, makes us grow and change. Because either we're embracing growth and change and evolution, or we're still, and if we're in stillness, we're actually in decay and stagnation. So he's got something going on where he's become restless, and it sounds like you've tried everything that you could do to reconnect with him. And maybe what the universe or God or whatever the innocuous powers that be have in mind for you is mm -hmm. leaping off and trying something completely new. Like maybe you decide to go with a girlfriend and take scuba diving classes and maybe you wind up going to swim in the ocean with the fish someplace that you've never been before. So it sounds like you've done enough to move toward him, and now it sounds like to bring newness in might mean that you get present with you and expand your own horizons. And also, the masculine is the hunter, and the hunter likes to stalk the energy of the feminine. And if you're there and you're just very available, then you're, you know, yesterday's it's news. hard to play trick. Where, yes, exactly. You know, a little bit, but I didn't want to overdo it, and yet... Um, uh, that worked for a while, and then all of a sudden, kind of like turned around, and um, oh, geez, this is a little bit hard to get, or something. And I, I find it hard to do that for for me. Well, yeah. I don't want you to play hard to get because that is when we hear that or when we try that, it's more like a manipulation. This True. is not about playing hard to get. This is an energy balance. In beloved relationships, there's an ebb and flow. One moves toward one, and then the other. And so if you just kind of go off and do your thing and experience a new aspect of yourself, he may become interested in that. But the point is not to get him to chase you. The point is yeah. to go meet a new you. Yeah, and have some fun with it. And let's talk to Kim right now from Chandler. Kim, go ahead with your question. Hi. I'd like to know how I should deal with um, a, my, my husband has a female friend that he's been friends with for approximately 10 years. She has an obvious crush on him. He knows that she does. She's going through a divorce and leans on him quite a lot. Um, she's really nice to me when he's around, but when he's not around, she's not so nice and pretty rude, actually. He thinks I'm sort of silly for making a big deal about it, and I think that he shouldn't be friends with her if she's not respectful of me, but he just thinks I'm silly. Mm, that is a hard one. I'm so glad you brought that up. Okay, Kim, does your husband listen to your feelings normally? Is he responsive to your feelings? If you bring something up, is he pretty good about listening and saying, I hear you, honey, I love you, I want you to be happy, absolutely. and that's my priority? You yeah, said, absolutely. absolutely. Okay, so normally he's that way. Yes. But with this, he just, he thinks that I'm overreacting, and he does know that she has a crush on him, but he said that it, he's confident with how we are, so I shouldn't feel uncomfortable about it. Do they spend time alone together frequently? Um, he, he goes out Tuesday nights, every Tuesday, with his uh, male friends, and now she's joined that group. And I find that strange, too. <laughs> and they also go to her house occasionally, and one time he didn't tell me, and that sort of, you know. It felt like that. a betrayal. Yeah, because I said, you know, it was a party. Why didn't you guys invite me? And he's like, oh, it was just for the moment. Um, I didn't know ahead of time, but... I know he knew ahead of time he sort of felt guilty and didn't know what to say about it. Okay, let me ask you a personal question, Kim. <clears throat> Excuse me. Has this affected your sex life at all? Has it sh shut you down a little bit? A little bit, yeah. Yeah, because I, I definitely feel... I just know I've been married before and he hasn't. He's younger than I am. Mm -hmm. And I know that um, if you ever have times in your marriage, like everyone does, ups and downs, 
if someone's there giving you attention, it's easy to take that attention. Right. And so I, I, now, I'm concerned with her uh, affection towards him. Right. Well, Kim, the reason I ask about your sex life is because when a woman doesn't feel that her feelings are being cherished and honored, it has a tendency to shut her down sexually because a woman's heart is connected to her womb. And if her heart is closed, her legs are closed. And so yeah. this, is, this is not a um, punishment for the men. But if you say to your husband, darling, I would love to be more connected with you romantically, and I'm starting to guard my heart. And as I start to guard my heart, it, when I close my heart, it shuts me down physically, sexually toward you. You guys should call me and come on in and do a session with me. Yeah, that, yeah, <laughs> this, yeah is, we this might be a bigger issue because he's not hearing something that is a big deal yeah. to you. And I right. don't want to do anything. We just had a daughter born with a disability, and I think that sort of she was born with Down syndrome, and it okay. put a big wedge. Yeah. Complicating issues. Well, and yeah. We, yeah, come in and talk to Jane. That would be a good idea. Yes. And we are going to take a quick short break. We need to right now, and we'll be back with more questions. Stay with us. And welcome back. I'm here with Counselor Jane Fendelman, who is giving us advice on Valentine's Day relationships. And we have, you have one more quick uh, addition for, for Kim, Kim that we just left talked to. For yet. Kim. Kim, your beloved should, you and your beloved should cultivate relationships with people who support the union. And so when you have, when either one of you has somebody who has an intention, they have a crush on one of you, they chip away at the foundation of your relationship. And your husband should realize this. And if he doesn't, Bring him in to see me. Yeah, there you go. Okay. <laughs> and now let, we have Bobby on the line. Bobby, go ahead with your question. Hi, Jane. Um, my question is, um, I've been in a relationship for approximately eight years now. Can you hear me? Yes. yes. Uh -huh. Okay. And, um, well, we have a four-year-old daughter. We have, um, I'm currently expecting another child. Oh, congratulations. Why, thank you. And my question is, um, we have great passion. Um, we have a very good, um, lots of love in our relationship. There's just no communication. Um, when I try to communicate with him, he tends to shut down and get defensive. What's the best way to get a man to open up and communicate with you? That is such a hard one. Okay. <laughs> I have something that I call talking stick. It's a Native American tradition, and when I have couples and I teach them how to do talking stick, and children and sometimes men like this better because when you're doing talking stick, the person speaking holds the stick, and you only have 10 to 15 minutes to voice your concerns. The thing that scares men the most is they don't know when the woman's going to end. Stop talking, because <laughs> women could go on forever. And I talk about fight style. In people's first session with me, I want to know, do you, are you an advancer or withdrawer? Advancers like to talk things out, withdrawers like to let things calm down, let's leave this alone. Uh -huh. And it doesn't work because it's from the reptilian brain and it's fight or flight. It doesn't work. So talking is stick. You sit down, you get eyeball to eyeball, you state your complaint, you hand the stick over, they say exactly what they heard you say so that you know that you were heard. Uh -huh. So it, it's hard to get men to want to talk. Very, yeah. very hard. <laughs> But, I mean, if he really loves you, he wants to know what your heart is saying, and so he's going to get still with you, and he's going to try. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you so much for your calls. And thank you so much, Jane. Uh, You're great. welcome. Really, really fun. <clears throat> great on Valentine's Day. Very okay. Fun. And we'll be right back to this short break. Stay with us. Log on now to olympics.azcentral.com, your all-access pass to the Olympic Games. Brought to you in part by Harris Phoenix Auction Casino Resort. Next, starting over, Christy gets caught. We're trying to give you a reality check. Did you think we'd forget? How will she handle the consequences? If she doesn't take care of herself, she may not be so lucky. Starting over. Coming up next. If you have endometriosis, you may be eligible to participate in a clinical research study evaluating an investigational medication for pelvic pain. To qualify, you must be a woman 18 to 45 years of age, have moderate to severe pelvic pain, have had a diagnosis of endometriosis via laparoscopy or laparotomy. You will receive study-related exams, lab work, and study medication at no cost to you. Hey, Hugh Downs is 85, magician teller of Penn & Teller is 58, and singer Rob Thomas is 34.
happy birthday. And here's a look at what you can expect at today's Olympic coverage. It all begins at 4 o'clock with women's cross country and women's luge. From 5 to 7, tune in for all of your local and national news, plus the Olympic Zone with Tram Mai and Scott Light at 6.30. Then Olympic coverage continues with men's figure skating featuring Russian splashy uh, skaters and the gold medal favorites of these games. Potential American final medalists also include newcomers Johnny Weir and Evan. And uh, you will also see alpine skiing, speed skating, and the women's luge gold medal final event. So all sorts of great Olympic action. And we want to thank all of our guests for being here today. And Jane, thank you so much and happy Valentine's Day. You're so welcome. Happy Valentine's Day to you. And last Valentine's note for anyone? Last Valentine's <laughs> Day note. You know, I'm a single woman, uh -huh. and I feel madly in love, and it's because I have fabulous friends, and if I want flowers, I'll go get me flowers. See, buy yourself flowers or chocolates if you don't have someone to buy them for you today, right? Yeah. That's right, <laughs> Thank exactly. You, Thank you so much. We love You're you. Welcome, Thanks a lot. Honey. Okay, have a great afternoon. Bye-bye, and happy Valentine's Day.